don't go down the rabbit hole yeah. of getting obsessed with that stuff because, you know, in order for there to be songs, we, we, you know, we need you to... <laughs> And the other question we'd like to ask is about advice, whether you've received or whether you've um, acquired through experience uh, advice that you'd pass on to to other people. Just write lots of songs. Uh, yeah, I'm so, so don't feel like I'm in a position. My sister recommended a podcast to me recently um, that had an episode about it's all uh, yeah, it's all about kind of reframing sort of stories from the past. But there happened to be a musical episode on Max Martin, and I guess the thing that the thing that it was looking at his success is I think the third most successful songwriter ever after Lennon and McCartney. But but the conclusion that it drew, which was really interesting, was that um, despite the number of hits he's written, they've all been collaborative, like every single one of them, either with another writer or producers or a team or the artist, and it's that it's that kind of. That's, I guess, this is quite Swedish, um, you know, it takes a village mentality where everyone's opinion is as valid as the next. And I think um, that's the thing that, I don't know, I, I guess my kind of, to use a really cheesy word, but journey as a kind of artist and us as a band going from like one or four people through to now this kind of big collective of, of, of talent, talented people who've worked on this album with us has been one of like accepting that, you know, in order to sort of like go through a musical career or go through the world like that to, for it to be enjoyable to a share the burden but also there's obviously so much both like socially and musically and ideas wise to be to be to be grasped from from allowing other people in and from collaborating and and yeah that's i guess that's the thing that i've learned and hopefully as a piece of advice it'd be like if you're like me <laughs> just like chill out a bit and, and let other people in because you know that, i don't know if that makes any sense yeah, yeah. it does uh, i reckon for me it's probably um like learn to or, or try and limit yourself with your tools and your palettes and, and what you're what you're doing because um uh everything's so easily available now I, I could load up a plugin of ev any synth you can think of and and it and it can be really daunting and i think everyone or anyone who's got into production um will probably go through a bit of a gear phase or like lusting after equipment or thinking that they need every single plugin and i've definitely done that um but you get to a point where it's really stressful, and you can, and like you, then you load a song up, and the plugin doesn't load, or whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, just limiting what your tool set is. I think I've heard a few people on your podcast say similar things. You know, Logic's a great tool, but it it almost does too much sometimes. Um, you know, I try and keep up with technology, and I kind of I know how to use Logic, but I def I, I learn what I need to learn to do what I need to do, whereas. I used to want to know what every single bit of it did and that I think can really just mean you never decide on anything and, and you're constantly, oh, what about that option? What about that option? I think, yeah, when you've not finished a song and you're on your 36th snare audition, it's it's very counterproductive. Um, but I remember you've said that right from the beginning. Like I remember at the start feeling super self-conscious about how, how like my massive limitations you know, in making demos as, as a sort of like wannabe producer. But like you kind of saying, particularly when we were on tour and I was writing, like, don't go down the rabbit hole yeah. of getting obsessed with that stuff because, you know, in order for there to be songs, we, we, you know, we need you to, <laughs> like, just bring up a keyboard sound and, and like, the simplest beat you need and write a really good song. Yeah, and like, like the first don't... album, Dan had done all, loads of it on his own already on a Gar probably band. not deliberately distorted electric piano sound and <laughs> a kick and a clap. And some songs... Uh, started like that and don't sound anything like that at all. And uh, a song like Floors, pretty much the sounds sounds the same because yeah, you you want twelve tracks of it, but at the at that point, um, it was really unique and cool. And I would have never thought to to use that palette of sounds and and stuff. So yeah, know when to go. Yeah, that's cool. We don't need to start auditioning a load of things and changing it for the sake of it. Yeah, um, I think yeah. I think like reductionism as well, and knowing when to stop. Yeah, it's two things that we have no idea about, but I've heard that they're really helpful. <laughs> so. It's a weird because because these podcasts are so good. Podcasts like this are great. YouTube's insane. What you can go on and f you can pretty much find anything now. And there's, there'll be a video of someone making showing how to do it. But it's so easy to get caught up in thinking that you've got to find every video. And there's a lot of um, channels now about like, how to mix and and all that sort of stuff. And you know, if you've heard something on a podcast like this and you'd pick up one thing and you go oh, I might check out that plugin that sounded cool that's all, that's great um, but it's also totally cool to just accept that 
I don't know, Spiker makes this album is just way better at mixing than most people. His ears, his ears are better. He he hasn't got, um, he's got amazing gear, I'm sure, but he hasn't got anything that you couldn't get. He's just better than you, um, <laughs> like and and things like that. And the, and then when you when you learn that you'll probably be better than some people at some stuff, um, that's cool. Like it's not all about oh, what EQ did Spike use? Because when I get that EQ, I'm going to be as good as him. It's like you won't be because you won't know what to do with it, but you'll be good at some stuff. I think that I got so caught up in, you know, which, and it is good. You should read as much as you can and learn as much as you can, but don't think that that is the the actual answer. It's uh, more like find one new tool and then start getting really good at using it instead of getting it, putting it in the rack, looking at it and go, right, I'm, be- I'm a bit better now. Now I better buy another tool to get even better again. <laughs> it's like, and then not know what the third knob from the right does. Ooh.